Hey, Mario, it's Trevor from CUTuckers.com. Um, you got you got a great game on Saturday. Had the diving uh, touchdown catch. Um, did you feel like with with DJ making his first start that it was really on you and Cornell to to step up and and take a leadership role and and make make some big catches for for your freshman quarterback? Uh, yeah, Coach Sweeney uh, definitely challenged us for the game. Uh, that you know the, the playmakers on offense. You know we have to make those plays to make him comfortable, so that you know he can get comfortable in the game and be able to you know uh, feel good about making those throws that he made to me and Cornell and everybody else. Uh, so you know Coach Sweeney just definitely challenged us through our practice last week and just you know making those plays in practice so that when the game come, you know we we're comfortable and we we're ready to make those plays for DJ so that he can go out there and just be comfortable and do his thing. Amari, this is Pete at AP. That. Uh, touchdown catch you had it looked like there was some pretty pretty strong zip on that ball oh did, did, yeah did he was it pretty hard to catch or oh uh no nah, i wouldn't say it was it was hard to catch uh i work on that that catch uh at the practice uh, on the jug machines every day so it was just a routine catch for me but you know he put it in the perfect spot uh it was a great ball by him uh with where the defender was on me uh, on my upfield shoulder so he put it in my backfield shoulder you know, it, it just was a touchdown, you know, the perfect play by him. You know, uh, we practice that in practice every Tuesday. So it was just from practice field to the game. Amari, it's Trevor again. I, I, I was actually going to, uh, to follow up on Pete, I was actually going to ask you um, some of those passes. I, I, know, I know you work the jugs, uh, ramp that thing up like nobody's business, but um, some of those passes look like they were coming in pretty hot from DJ, maybe even more so than Trevor. Um, do, do you feel like that's the case? I mean, I, we all know he has a strong arm, but um, how, how catchable is, is the ball that he throws? Oh, that's real catchable. You know, being a receiver, you're supposed to catch everything that comes your way. It doesn't matter who it comes from. So that's really our mindset. Is that it's just the ball coming out with, and we got to make those plays. So that's really how we see it. Uh, it doesn't matter who, if it's from Trevor, you know, DJ or Tyson or Hunter Helms. Uh, we just got to make those plays when it's thrown to us, and it's just the ball coming to us. That's really how we see it. Hey, Mari, uh, Michael and Anna with the state newspaper. Um, do you guys or you or any of the other receivers, do you guys call DJ Big Cinco or does he just call himself a Big Cinco or what do, what do you kind of make of that that nickname and just his his swagger in general out there? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, we have a lot of nicknames. I mean, we call him a lot of things, you know, but he definitely does have that swagger. We just always joke around with him. You know, he always has he's always in that mood. Uh, you know, to, to joke around, you know, call, call each other names and stuff like that. That's just our culture and our team. Like, we're all close like that. We always joke around with each other like that. But, um, yeah, he, he, we have a lot of nicknames. Big Oos, you know, it's a lot of things like that we call them. You know, DJ, you know, y'all probably saw after the, after the game we played, go DJ as my DJ, you know. This is our relationship with each other. Uh, it's just how we're built. And, you know, I feel like that's why we're so successful because I'm armed between the team. Amari Brad from Clemson SI here. Um, when you two years ago you played Notre Dame, you get a chance to play him again. From somebody who's grown up around college football so much in your life, what does that that name mean to you, Notre Dame football? Uh, it means a lot. It's a lot of history, man. Uh, they, they have one of the most historic programs in college football, if not the most. Uh, so it means a lot to know that, especially that we're playing there. Uh, you know, I, I've been there one time. Uh, I haven't. I didn't go on any visits, but I went there. Um, when my dad was coaching at USC, they played at, at Notre Dame in 2015. I was able to go there uh, to the game, be on the sideline and stuff. So I got a kind of feel for the atmosphere and stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, now that I'm playing in a game, man, uh, it's, it's going to be surreal. You know, I'm excited for the opportunity. This is Todd Shaughnessy in Spartanburg. What did you think about the way Cornell played? And, and did you see a different look about him in practice during the week? Uh, no, I haven't seen anything different. You know, we've all been practicing, challenging each other every single week. Uh, but, you know, I felt good. You know, it's just seeing his fruits of his labor is coming. Uh, he's been putting in that work uh, for five years, man. Uh, just to see him being successful uh, this whole season, you know, it puts a smile on my face because me and him are kind of in the same situation. When we came here, you know, we had to wait our turn. And now it's, it's our last years, and, you know, we're putting all our marbles in. You know, we're out there making plays. Uh, so it just it just makes me feel good, and I know it makes the coaches feel good to, to know that it's guys like me and Cornell that stuck with it, uh, stuck around. You know, now we're getting our fruits out of here, so it feels amazing. All right, this is Matt with the State. You touched on it a little bit there, but I think this is already the most yards and, and touchdowns um, in 
season for you so far in your career. Just what what's it been like, kind of becoming that go to guy, being um, the guy that goes out and makes so many big plays. It has been good, you know. I just accepted the challenge because I knew coming in, you know, that was that was my role. Uh, I knew I had to step up, and, you know, I had to make those plays, being uh, the veteran guy that I am, and being uh, having the most experience out of the group. Uh, I knew that I had I was going to be able to to get those uh, opportunities. So, you know, that's really what I did. And also, just grind for this. And, you know, now that it's here, you know, all the hard work that I put in the past is paying off. Uh, so I just got to keep going uh, and keep making those plays for my team and get wins. With Notre Dame, did they recruit recruit you at all? I know you said you didn't take any visits there. Not a lot. Not any. What was your What was your first impression of DJ? Which is when you met him in person as a person, and then just kind of when you saw him on the field for the first time. What was just kind of your initial impressions of him? When I first met him, you know, um, I kind of knew about him uh, with with my dad being in Cali for so long. I kind of knew about him coming up in high school and stuff like that. So I knew who he was, uh, but I didn't meet him until he came on a visit here. And, you know, uh, when I met him, he, he's so laid back, man. He's he's literally, literally like a Californian guy, what you would think, just laid back and, and cool, collective, you know. He, it doesn't seem like he's ever, like, phased or ever feels pressure. Um, and, and it showed in the game. Like, he was cool and collective, man. Uh, he stayed cool the whole game. And uh, he really, you know, brought up guys, you know, when uh, Travis said fumble, when that happened, you know, he went to him and said that he got him. Uh, and that's just leadership, just showing leadership by DJ. He's, he's just a freshman. So, you know, I'm excited to see how he's going to progress and uh, become that leader whenever it, it is his time for real. So, you know, I'm, I'm just excited about him. And whenever he, he stepped on the field, you know, it's just everything that you thought, everything that you thought that he would be uh, zipping the ball, you know, being being accurate and, you know, being smart. He's a very smart player, too. So I'm just excited to see how he's going to, you know, evolve in the next couple of years. Hey, Amari, it's Anna with Clemson 24-7. What have you seen so far from Notre Dame's secondary, um, and particularly Kyle Hamilton, safety? Uh, you're talking about Kyle, the safety 14? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've seen uh, – they're, they're a very experienced secondary. You know, Nick McLeod uh, coming from NC State, you know, we, we played against him. and you know, the, I've played against him the past two years, so I'm pretty familiar with, with him. Uh, their, their safety, number 20, uh, captain, you know, senior. Uh, been there for a while, been through some injuries, but, you know, he's very experienced. You know, he's a, he's a great safety. Uh, 14, you know, he's very long, uh, fast. He, he, he's always at the ball, you know, always getting there and making tackles and stuff like that. You know, other corner 26, uh, they rotate a lot of guys at field corner too. Uh, but, you know, they're, they're all fundamentally sound. You know, they're, they're where they need to be. Uh, you know, they're, they're athletic, long, uh, and they make plays. Uh, so you just got to go out there, you know, study film on them really hard. Uh, just go out there and make those plays presented. You know, uh, it's going to be hosed there. It's, it's always going to be hosed with, with plays that we put in, with the game plan. So we just got to execute the plays. Uh, just go out there and make those plays. All right, this is Matt again. I know you mentioned Nick McLeod. What's it like going up against him and um, seeing him go from NC State to Notre Dame? What have you seen on film from him? Oh, he's a good DB. You know, it's, it's a reason why he went to from the NC State to Notre Dame in a better program. You know, uh, he, he's elite. Uh, he's long, you know, physical. Uh, so you got to play with good technique versus him, especially in the boundary. You know, he plays boundary, so he knows less space. So you, you definitely got to play with great technique versus him uh, and be physical. Uh, so that's really what I've seen so far. So you just got to play with good technique, man. That's versus any DB. You got to come prepared, you know, bring all your tools. You know, don't don't use the same thing. You know, switch it up on run plays. You know, make it look like it's a pass on run plays. So, you know, keep him on his toes. Uh, so that's really all you got to do, just play with good technique, uh, play fundamentally sound, you know, just make those plays. Did you go up against him a lot when he was at NC State? Uh, no, nah, because uh, when he was at NC State, um, I was at two man. Um, so he was he's always been in the boundary. He's always been a boundary corner. So I haven't really got to match up with him. Amari, what's just your overall assessment of, of Notre Dame's defense? Um, just seems like a really physical, sound group under defensive coordinator Clark Lee. Just what have you seen from them this season and how they've defended teams? Uh, they're a very, uh, they're a veteran group. Uh, I think they have like eight returning starters, I think, something like that. So, you know, they, they, they know how to play. Uh, they've been together for a long time. So, you know, they do a good job, like I said earlier, doing what they do uh, and being where they need to be. You know, they do a good job on third down, especially uh, switching up and, and making uh, different looks with packages and bringing different blitzes and stuff like that. So, you know, credit to their DC for uh, doing a good job with mixing things up like that. So, you know, that's really all I see is that, you know, they're a springs group. You know, uh, they're big and physical, uh, and they're going to be what they need to be. Uh, so we just got to, you know, like I said earlier, study film hard and, you know, execute game plan. 
Hey, Amari, Amari, I want to go back to something that you were just talking about with technique. Coach Elliott was talking about you the other week and talked about how you do things in the game that set up other things, you know, the way you run your routes, the way you come out of your breaks, your, the way you block, you're always setting something up. Does that take a long time to, to learn? Is that something that, that you've really tried to hone in on is being really consistent with that throughout the game? And is that something that uh, you try to teach to other players as well? Yeah, for sure. It's both. Uh, it's definitely being a, a, a veteran guy that I've learned while being here. Uh, that's making things look uh, look different, uh, not not giving the same pitch every single time. You know, you, you got to throw different pitches. Uh, so that's really what Coach Sweeney said. You got to throw different pitches and, and keep them on their toes. When it's a run play, you know, run a route, give it, give it a quick release, you know, run them off, make them think it's a go route. Uh, so they keep them on their toes, you know, just got to just gotta bring out different tools. Uh, that's really what Coach Sweeney has been emphasizing while I've been here, and you know, I've been learning that. You know, I do that in the game, and, you know, it's, it's paying off and it works. Uh, so, you know, I'm just going to keep doing it. Hey, Amari, Ralph Russo from AP, uh, just a, on a little bit of a different topic. You guys have tomorrow off because of its election day, and that seems like one of those ideas that maybe at the time it was thought of seemed like a pretty cool idea, but now in practice, like, you have to – you know, your schedule changes. I'm wondering if a lot of you guys have already voted anyway because you're from out of state. Uh, I'm just wondering what your thoughts are on, on the uh, s simple idea of having this as a day off for college athletes. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, it's definitely new. Um, so, yeah, we practiced last night. A uh, little sore, but, you know, when we get out there, you know, you get the adrenaline going. It's just like a regular Monday. And today, you know, we have Tuesday practice. So, you know, it's just one of those things where you can't really think of it that much and let it affect you. You just got to go with the flow, go with the schedule that's presented, and, you know, just put that work in whenever we have to. You know, tomorrow's going to be a good day to, you know, bounce back and recover a little bit because, you know, we had two days right after playing a tough game. Uh, but, you know, you just got to, you know, just take it. Uh, and put in that work because, you know, we got to put in the work eventually so that we can go out there Saturday and, you know, and play well. So that's really just a, a mentality thing where you just have to attack each day. Thanks. For sure. Hey, Amari, it's Trevor again. Um, Travis had a, a career high in reception yards on Saturday. With his increased role in the passing game, how much does that open things up for you and the other wide receivers? Oh, it opens up. It opens up a, a lot. Just being able, the way that Coach Elliott and our and our staffs being able to use uh, Travis in in a lot of different ways, it opens up everything. Because you know, every DC is gonna come into the game. You know, their plan is gonna be like to stop number nine. Uh, so you know, it's it's always gonna be things open uh, other than with with Travis being the type of player that he is. Uh, so you know that our coaches have been doing a good job in, like with the game plan, just making sure everybody you know eats. Uh, so. You know, I love it. Uh, Trevor's going to get his. You know, everybody else going to get theirs, too. So it's just a great job, coaching staff, and doing a great job all year. Hey, Amari, it's Anna again. Do you lead any differently this week or say anything differently to the wide receivers, just knowing that there is a freshman quarterback with his first road start and then also knowing the wide receiver room is, is a little shorthanded right now with, with Joe and Frank banged up? Uh, you know, I always got to lead, uh, just being that veteran, uh, I always got to lead. Uh, but I don't, I don't think it's any different this week. You know, uh, it's just it's just another game. Like Coach Sweeney says, it's the next game. It's a business game because it's the next game. You know, you can't think too much about what we don't have. You just got to, you know, think what we do have. And what we have is, you know, players, playmakers uh, everywhere still. You know, we're deep. And I'm confident in that. I'm confident in DJ. You know, he, he's calm and collective. And I don't think he's going to be paid just like he was on Saturday. Uh, so I think we're prepared, man. Uh, we're ready to go play. Mari, you, you mentioned um, the, the history of Notre Dame's traditions. Do you think it'll be particularly neat for you stepping on that historic field uh, Saturday night, or will, will it just seem like another road game? Oh, yeah, it's, it's definitely going to be special just knowing the history that they have. But, you know, like I said earlier, you know, you can't you can't think too much of it with it being a top five matchup, Cal's game day, and it being, you know, at Notre Dame. Uh, you just got to approach it uh, like any other game and just go out there and do what, you, what we've been doing all year. Uh, but it's definitely it's definitely going to be special playing in a historic stadium like that.